Hi guys, welcome to video lecture number one, stars, nebula, and galaxies. In this video, I'll introduce you to these three components of the universe, compare their sizes, and share some of their characteristics. Go ahead and pause the video and write the essential question in your notes. Remember that the universe is all time, space, matter, and energy. Of all the components of the universe, stars probably fascinate me most of all. Even though most stars are enormous compared to the Earth, they're actually the tiniest thing we'll discuss in this video. You probably already know that a star is essentially a giant ball of burning gas, or what scientists call plasma, which is the fourth and most abundant state of matter in the universe. The other three states of matter you're well aware of, solids, liquids, and gases. Stars are held together by their own gravity and are the element factories of the universe. They create almost all of the elements you've studied on the periodic table this year, from hydrogen and helium, which scientists believe were generated by the Big Bang. Stars can be sorted into five basic categories, which correspond to their age and other characteristics like their brightness and their temperature. Stars spend most of their existence as main sequence stars, which have a wide variety of brightness and temperatures. If they're very massive main sequence stars, they may become blue giants, which are very hot and very bright. Towards the end of a star's life, it expands outward into a red giant or supergiant star, depending on how massive the star was to begin with. These stars are bright because of their size, but they're cool compared to main sequence stars. After they die, some stars become tiny white dwarf stars over here. White dwarfs are so small that they aren't very bright, but they do burn at very high temperatures. We'll learn about the life cycle of stars in the next video, but they are loosely arranged in order of their age on this slide. So where do stars come from? Let's take a look at our next component of the universe, nebula. Nebula are the birthplace of the stars. And as you can see from the images, they're really beautiful. They are huge clouds of gas, mostly hydrogen and dust, that have been pulled together by gravity. When gravity pulls this gas in really close, all those atoms, hydrogen and dust particles, begin to bump into each other, which produces heat. As the nebula gets smaller and more and more dense, it gets hotter until it spontaneously ignites into a luminous star. Some nebula, however, are the remnants of dead stars. They're called planetary nebula, even though they have nothing to do with planets. The person who discovered them thought that they had something to do with planets, but they didn't, but they got stuck with the name anyway. A planetary nebula forms when a star's gravity can't hold it together anymore. When that happens, the outer layers of the star drift back off into space, leaving only the core of the dead star which is a white dwarf star. This white dwarf star is surrounded by a nebula. These three images on the right side of the slide are planetary nebula, and you can clearly see the white dwarf at the center of each. Nebula have no definite shape, unlike stars, which are spheres, but they are much, much bigger than stars. Even nebula, however, are minuscule in comparison to the size of galaxies. Galaxies are the largest components of the universe that we'll look at in this unit. They're usually hundreds of thousands of light years across. It takes light about 200,000 years to travel from one end of our Milky Way galaxy to the other end. It's traveling at 300 million meters per second. Think about how big these objects are. Each galaxy is made up of billions and billions of stars and they're classified according to their shape. Spiral galaxies are what you probably think of when you hear the word galaxy. They have these distinct spiral arms. They're flat, like a frisbee, and have a central bulge or galactic center, which you can see in these pictures. It's a dense cluster of stars at the middle of the galaxy. Lenticular galaxies, like these two, share most of the characteristics of spiral galaxies, but they don't have spiral arms. They sort of look like a UFO a lot of the time, 
and often have a larger galactic center than spiral galaxies. This lenticular galaxy here also has a great image of a dust lane. A dust lane is a dense, obscuring band of interstellar dust. You see it as a dark swath like this band against the background of a brighter object like a galaxy. So a dust lane is essentially a lot of dust collected together that blocks light. Elliptical galaxies are either round or egg-shaped and are more three-dimensional than spiral or lenticular galaxies. They're not flat like them and they don't have any real internal organization or structure. So galaxies are huge clusters of stars that are classified by shape. But some galaxies just don't fit the mold, like these two. They don't have any clear shape. Astronomers simply call these irregular galaxies, which is a catch-all classification for galactic misfits. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.